Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. I hope everybody's doing well. Fender and Squire have just announced a bunch of new 2022 models. Been getting a lot of questions about them. Destroy the crap out of that like button and let's take a look together. Alright, Fender, what you got for 2022? New releases, let's go. Oh, sweet mandolin. All right, personally, I just want to know about the stuff that can chug, though. Yo, these 60th anniversary Jags, though. Now, let's take a look at this red one first. 60th anniversary Jaguar, two single coils, switches everywhere, classic Jag tremolo system. I don't really f with red finishes all too much, but when they sparkle. Oh, and I do like a good matching headstock. 60th anniversary Jag model celebrate the introduction of Fender's top-of-the-line offset instrument in 1962. Jag was introduced as Fender's premium offering and advertised as a faster, more comfortable playing guitar. Really? The bodies are huge, though. Ah, uh, whatever. Guitar features engraved neck plate with 60th anniversary logo, which is also embroidered onto the interior of the included hard shell case. I see. Is there a picture of that? No, there is not. Offered in two colors. I completely missed that this is in a different color, too. Eh, I think the red is better. Definitely. Definitely better. Nitro finish, C-shaped neck profile, 60th anniversary single coil Jag pickups, bound fingerboard with block inlays, vintage correct hardware, seven and a quarter inch fingerboard radius, so... That is a round boy. Yeah, I mean, I've been getting more into offsets lately for sure. I mean, I think you can see the case back there of my Jim Root Jazzmaster. And I love the Valiant Jupiter as well, but I don't think I'm ready to take the plunge on a vintage, vintage Jag quite yet. This, though, hello. 60th anniversary Lux jag oh my god yes dude look at this okay so we got locking tuners we got the little carve back here nice oh man that matching headstock with the gold logos and this is the ultra lux so it's got the stainless steel frets compound fingerboard radius the tusk nut yes dude custom double tap humbucking pickups augmented d-shaped neck doesn't have a tunematic bridge it's got an adjust stillmatic bridge oh, i love that they've updated a lot of the specs but they haven't made it like a super metal guitar you know it's still got a lot of vintage flair to it but then it's got the compound fingerboard radius the stainless steel frets i love everything about this besides the price it's an american fender so i'm sure it's worth it still i wish there was a made in mexico version of the ultra lux series though it's nuts how many they'd sell if they could do this at like a thousand dollars all right now we're getting into the 40th anniversary 40th anniversary of what first instruments to bear the squire name were introduced in 1982 all right well that answers that squire 40th anniversary collection celebrates the 40 year journey of fender's entry-level brand with special editions of the telecaster stratocaster jazzmaster precision bass and jazz bass, all available in gold edition and vintage edition variants. Okay, so this is the Jazzmaster Gold Edition. All right, it's kind of subtle, but I think I see some gold. Do you see it? Wow, that is, you know, usually I'm not one for the gaudy type looking things. That anodized gold pick guard. The rest of the gold hardware, I could take it or leave it, but please make that a thing that you sell by itself on the store. Blue sparkle to engraved neck plate. That's nice. That's really nice. How much is this? 600 bucks? It's the other color. Olympic white. Oh my god. Is it time to get a real Jazzmaster? It might be. It might be time. I've always thought the trim design was super weird. Like, it extends so far back from the bridge. I mean, I'll be real with you. It is completely over the top. It looks like a royal wedding gift or something. It's like I've just discovered El Dorado. Let's check out the vintage variant. All right, well, there's still a load of gold, but oh, it's just the, um, it's just the pick guard. I don't know. There's something about the colors that's not sitting right with me here. There's just a lot of them on one guitar. Nah, okay, never mind. This is my favorite. That pick guard works with that body color, and then are they aging hardware on a Squire? Either way, this is my favorite one. Maple board, dot inlays rather than um what was it pal Faro and big blocks other than that all the specs are the same as the gold edition would not mind one of these 40th anniversary vintage edition jazz masters to be honest oh hello 
Uh, do I like this one better though? I like the price better. It's like a hundred bucks cheaper. Shell pink pearl color as well. So it's kind of pearlescent. It's not like a flat shell pink. Now, I did get really excited when they first initially announced the Contemporary Active Jazz Master. It was a few years ago. I tried the one in seafoam green pearl. It looked so good and the quality was just, oh, it was so disappointing. And it looks like all the specs are the same except that they've added uh, the two-point trim. Except no, that's not the only difference. They've added a fucking roasted maple neck. Okay. Got the Jim Root little neck cutaway here. It's got the active battery compartment. Because of course the SQRs are uh, Squire's proprietary active pickup. They're actually not bad. They're very bright compared to EMGs. Oh, that black headstock too though. Oh, it's so metal. Right, what's the other color it comes in? Sunset metallic. Never mind. Let's go back to the pearl. Yeah, man, this is a super cool series and it's uh, 490 bucks, which is a pretty decent price. I, I think I just have PTSD from the last contemporary active jazz master I tried. I wish Fender would do like a made in Mexico version of the series because I think it's awesome. Um, I just have trust issues with the contemporary active series from past experiences. Okay, continuing the contemporary active stuff, the Starcaster, which from what I understand is actually, despite how uh, interesting the body shape is, has been a hit for Squire with these active pickups. Roasted maple neck, Jim Root cutaway, a shoe for the headstock. I mean, that headstock looks like it's about to literally kick somebody's ass. Kind of reminds me of like a semi-hollow body shape, but in solid body form. Comes in shoreline gold and oh my goodness. Ah, oh, that is dope. Yeah, you know, I wish Fender stocked their parts store with more bodies in these like modern sparkle finishes. Because right now, look at this. You got candy apple red, you got black, you got Olympic white, you got three color sunburst. You know, could you imagine if you could make parts casters from Fender in this color? Like a Jazzmaster build in this color would be so sick. Cool specs, really cool color. I, I just don't know about that body shape, man. Alright, let's get back to the 40th anniversary models. Now, the Telecaster. Bruh, again, that anodized pick guard. Man, if that fingerboard is ebony or they dyed it like a darker color, that would be really hot. I'm not sure the Pal Ferro and the Perloid inlays. It looks kind of kind of cheap. Bound fingerboard with block inlays though. I know people are going to go crazy over this. So the gold edition comes in black and also Sherwood green. Eh, I mean, this one's not really for me. I do applaud Fender for allowing Squire to do like cool unique things though. All right, that was the gold version. Show me the vintage version now and of course Butterscotch blonde. Is there a more iconic Telecaster look? It's a shame they haven't gone with the gold anodized pick guard. It looks like this one is still anodized though, just in black. Can we confirm that? Yeah, anodized aluminum pick guard. Nice. Oh, is it actually double bound? Oh, there's something really cool about double bound Telecasters though. I know, these are such small details to get hyped over, but I really appreciate them. Okay, satin vintage blonde. What else? Vintage edition in satin mocha. Hang on a second, are these made of mahogany? Age chrome hardware, anodized aluminum pick guard, Neato body. Yeah, that's like Asian mahogany, so that's actually a pretty big differentiating factor from this and a normal Telecaster. What's the last one? Satin Dakota Red. Yeah, red guitars aren't normally my thing, but with that anodized pick guard and the black double bound binding, it's not bad. This is what I mean with Fender guitars, man. Like sometimes they kind of all blend together. They like they all look the same. But it's these small details, like that double bound binding. I would not mind if that was on the Fender shop for bodies too. Personally, in general, Fender should just have more double bound Telecasters. It just brings an extra level of class, and I don't think it's that hard to do. Like they're definitely holding out on us. 40th anniversary Stratocaster Gold Edition. This one in Sienna Sunburst. For some reason, people seem to think I'm really into Strats. I'm kind of not. I've never come across Strat pickups that I really like. My favorite is the Fender Noventa because it's got freaking P90s in there. So this is by far my least favorite out of the gold edition. I say it's my least favorite and then they pull out this color. What the fuck? Instant karma. Wow, no, that's a cool color. And then the blue sparkle. I think ruby is the best color. Now, personally, I'm not interested in Strats, but now I'm upset that only the Strat comes in this dark ruby color. All right, what about the vintage edition though? So it comes in the satin seafoam green. Eh, it's still a bit too much going on color wise for me. Oh, so we got satin, sonic, blue. Damn it, dude, this happens like every time. The Strat is my least favorite fender shape, so of course they'd add all the coolest colors to it. And then the last one, 
Oh my god. Oh, it's really nice. Satin Sunburst, black anodized pick card. Why doesn't the Jazz Master come in this color? Uh, I am really happy for you Strat fans out there. That is a very, very cool looking guitar. Again, man, I wish these were offered as like standalone parts or on the mod shop as options because these are just inherently cool colors. I also wonder if this means Fender's gonna start doing more aged chrome for their reissues. I, I don't think it'll happen this year. This year is all about the 40th anniversary models, but it'd be really cool uh, to see some of this stuff pop up on like the classic vibes, for example. Yeah, so I mean, personally, I like the modern stuff. I don't think these are as exciting as the contemporary series guitars that launched last year with like the Roasted Maple Necks and stuff. But man, if you were not excited before about how much Fender's stepping up its game with the Squire line, you definitely should be. Maybe not for these models specifically. What I mean is Fender's allowing them to do unique, cool stuff instead of just like the poor man's version of whatever Big Brother Fender's doing. You know what I mean? Like these 40th anniversary models are a uniquely Squire celebration. We seem to have an entirely new series in the JV Modified. Let's see what that's about. All right, so what is this? JV Modified 50 Stratocaster HSS. What does JV stand for? Japanese vintage reissues from the early 80s JV modified guitars are a refined take on a modern classic. That is cool. The whole 80s made in Japan guitar scene is so interesting. There's a lot of mystique and misinformation about the models. You know, there were some that were licensed and legit. There were some that were just complete knockoffs. Right, let's take a look and see what makes these a refined take on a modern classic, as Fender puts it. Basswood body, thick soft V neck shape, nine and a half inch fingerboard radius. Uh, pickups are hot vintage Alnico humbucking, then vintage style single coil strat pickups. Tone two is a push pull for a coil split. The trem is a vintage style six screw. I'm not really seeing what the modern take aspect is on this. Look at the neck. These are made in Japan. That's awesome. Because of the price, I totally thought it was made in Mexico, but made in Japan for 1300 it's pretty tempting. I guess by refined take, they just mean that it was made in 2022 with all the quality and consistency that you'd expect from a guitar built today. Because, I don't know, besides the soft v-neck and I guess the zebra humbucker, this all seems pretty straightforward to me. Huh. No idea what they mean by that. Alright, so that was the JV50s, what about the JV60s? So, we're losing the humbucker, we're getting another single coil. I love the giant headstock, man. I know a lot of people think they're goofy. Both the bullet that I started on and the Squire Hello Kitty, that's my main go-to writing guitar because the Ever2 makes it so stable, have the giant headstock. So, maybe I'm just used to it, but it just looks right to me. The regular headstock looks kind of tiny. Alright, so what's different about this one besides the color and the pickups? I guess the push-pull pot does something different, adds the neck pickup to positions 1 and 2. Oh, and the vintage style tuners are actually locking. I guess I missed that on the other one. No thumb screw or anything, so I guess the locking mechanism is automatic. There it is, again, made in Japan, stamped on the neck. Yeah, I love the bigger headstock of the Olympic white body, but I'm not sure that I can live with the single coil <laughs> Bridge. And lastly, you knew that there was going to be a Telecaster, and this one also has the anodized gold pickguard. Same key specs, V maple neck, 9.5 inch radius maple fingerboard, vintage pickups. Oh, and this one actually offers the four-way switch stock, and that basically puts both the Tele pickups in parallel, so they act as like a big-ass humbucker. Honestly, I think turning the Tele pickups into a big-ass humbucker should be a standard feature for all Tellys across the board, so that's really cool. Something I can't get over about vintage Telecasters, though, the truss rod adjustment. Like you notice, there's no hole on the headstock and that is because the truss rod adjustment is on the neck. You have to take the neck completely off to adjust it, which is entirely impractical. I get it, it's tradition, but no thank you. The JV modified 60s custom Telecaster. Oh look, you can adjust the truss rod at the headstock like a normal guitar. Already that's a massive <laughs> improvement. Interesting font for custom Telecaster. Bound body, nice. Four-way pickup selector too. I think the only difference between this and the other one is the rosewood fingerboard and that truss rod adjustment system. All right, not a bad lineup, it has to be said. Cool, and I've also been told that they have new pedals. Now, I'm not a pedal person at all. Uh, I like the industrial design these are going for, but more so than that, please Please, I beg, for all that is good and holy, make these knobs available for separate purchase. I would love to have these to put on guitars. Could you imagine? Sometimes these small visual details that can make such a huge impact on aesthetics. Like I'm currently modding the Squire Affinity Telecaster Deluxe. Imagine, rather than using the stock 
knobs, I could use the one from the metal pedal or the gray ones from the space delay, or even get stupid with it with the uh, pink ones from the fuzz pedal. There's so many opportunities here. Please, please Fender, make this a thing. All right, so just a few final thoughts. Fender, even more than Gibson sometimes, gets a lot of shit on YouTube in the forums for doing same shit different year, different name. Well, I mean, this time they actually have a decent reason for sticking to the classics, and not just because they sell. 2022 is a very commemorative year for Fender. 60th anniversary of the Jazzmaster, 40th anniversary of Squire. For some reason, Loki, I thought Squire was newer, like they were born in the 90s. I have no idea why. And then Fender's MIJ reissues have been super popular last couple of years. The HM Strat, for example. Fender has such an iconic history, they'd be fools not to utilize it. And I'm glad they're continuing to do it in Japan and not just with the wacky heavy metal stuff, but also the vintage inspired classics. And you know, as far as pandemic years go, 15 new models, that's not bad. That's only the electrics and that covers a wide range. Budget metal guitars in the contemporary active series, special edition reissues of the classics, and one of the coolest takes on the modern Jazzmaster I've ever seen in the Ultra Lux. And let's not forget, Squire released an absolutely mind-blowing lineup last year. The Contemporary series brought Roasted Maple Necks at the budget level to the mainstream, and it has been a Dark Souls level <laughs> challenge to find any of those in stock. By the time new shipments of last year's models finally hit Sweetwater and Toman's inventory, it'll be like an entirely new lineup there as well. Fender and Squire do have a habit of trickling out new models over the course of the year. I'm sure that'll be the case in 2022 as well. Like new artist signatures, for example, I am still holding onto the pipe dream that will get a sandblasted Jim Root Jazzmaster. For now though, that 60th anniversary Ultra Lux Jazzmaster is fucking awesome and I want it. Anyways, just some of my thoughts. I would love to know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Shout out to my awesome patrons whose names are on the screen right now. They make this and all the other content possible. Consider joining them if you want to support the channel. You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. That stuff actually really helps out. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.